Hello again, everybody. It's Scott Casper, Takedown Wrestling. Our coverage of the sport continues in a long-waited-for interview. Into the Nike hot seat today, we've invited somebody I've admired for many years, somebody who flies well under the radar. He's one of the great coaches, not just in America, but in the international system, Coach Valentin Kalika. Coach, how are you? I'm doing well. You're getting ready to take a, another trip. This time yes. over to Russia, you're going to be hosting Helen Maroulis, Aaron Helen Pico, Maroulis, Elena Pereshkova. Elena Pereshkova. And this is yeah. a combined trip. And, and, Aaron, and Aaron Pico is yeah. actually, he's he going to compete. He's a priority guy here. He's, he's a very good guy. As a matter of fact, also sponsored by Nike. So yes. it's a combined trip sponsored by USA Wrestling, uh, Titan Mercury Wrestling Club, our friends at Sunkiss Kids. I, I, I like the combined effort. It's not often that women get to go and train uh, in Russia. Talk to us a little bit about the special opportunity this presents. Yeah, so um, what I study about Japanese girls and uh, Russian girls, that they have uh, good partners from the men's side. And, uh, you know, our guys, they help girls a lot, but they're busy. So my idea was try to introduce to our girls wrestling from the best Russian guys. So last year we went to Ossetia. You know, in uh, Russia, it's the two biggest wrestling schools. It's Ossetian school and the Dagestanian school. It's very good schools. So last year we went to Ossetia. Uh, my coach, uh, coaches from Ossetia, I have a lot of friends, so they invited me last year with Aaron, and I said, the only, you know, I, I said, if you take my girls, I'm coming. Right. So I brought my girls, and for them it was a little bit weird because in the city, there's, it's like a man wrestling sport. So they said, okay, we'll try. So we came. They were, first day, they were kind of a little bit cautious. And then personality of my girls, um, you know, they're not kind of Yelena and Helen and Vicky. So in in one, two days, I would say in two days, they became a stars in Rosetia. Everybody knew them. They've been talking about them on TV. Uh, when Aaron competed the tournament, they came to the tournament. So uh, uh, Russian introduced them to the public. So they were very popular, and they had a lot of wrestling partners and then learned a lot of wrestling from there. And so that With benefits the, them in a, in a big way. In a big way, yeah. So they learn a lot of technique from best Russian wrestlers, which is, I mean, Russian girls, they don't have this opportunity even. Russian girls would not come there to practice. They practice separate. They do hire men wrestlers, but they would not come to the highest level of wrestling and train together. So my girls did practice with uh, Ramonov and um, Gatsalo and all those best names you can name, Ossetian guys that were in the wrestling room. Valak, talk, talk, talk to us about the performance of uh, both Helen and Elena at the, at the World Championships. Uh, gutty, determined. How do you describe their performances? Well, Helen, as you know, he, nobody scoring with one point. She won tournament and, uh, and, she, and she really dominated. And I'm happy with Helen. Yelena, uh, we tried to wrestle 69 kilos because... Uh, she had a hard time wrestled 63 and the reason why because i think that last year she was so close to get gold medal and she lost in a final match in tashkent to ukrainian girl and after that i think mentally she could not recover and she was i think she was overeating in my opinion she didn't feel it but um i felt it and so um i kind of gave her one year break so i said you know just Try wrestle 63. If you can't, wrestle 69. And so she tried to wrestle 63 and she didn't make it. I mean, she didn't try hard. She just wanted to take mental break, what I understand. And she made the team 69 kilo. And I said, maybe, you know, 69 kilo would be good weight for you because she won a bunch of tournaments, including the Grand Prix in Baku, winning 69 kilo. Then she beat in Cuba, world champ from Germany. So I said, maybe it's your weight. And so we tried to wrestle 69 kilos. And um, at Las Vegas, she said she doesn't feel that 69 is your weight, her weight. 
So now, and she's mentally now okay to get back to diet, the discipline. And so we're ready to wrestle 63 kilos this year. We're talking to so, Coach Valentin Kalika. He is uh, a man who has dedicated his life to this sport. Uh, it started when you were 11 years old. You were a national champion of the USSR among students. You were the national Ukrainian champion, Greco. You performed the reading of USSR Master of Sports in Greco in 1977. It didn't yes. stop there. I mean, it's like your, your life from that point, from an athlete to becoming a student of the sport and a coach really blossomed from that point on because you still competed at the, at the veterans level, uh, winning a gold medal in 2009 uh, in the veterans division, also 2009 Greco-Roman Wrestling Veterans Division World Champ. So it was exercising what you knew, but talk to us about the transition from becoming an athlete to becoming a coach. Uh, after winning Veterans World? Or yeah, becoming... I mean, let's face it, you graduated from Kiev Sport University with a master's. Yeah. So when I was an eighth grader, my coach tried to talk to me about to get to the have a good education, talk about moving to Moscow University, become attorney or become engineer. And I said, coach, I want to be a coach. <laughs> That's my dream. And my mom actually was against it. And she said, that's not, what is that coach? And I said, no, it's a coach. And back then in Soviet Union, it's, it's nothing wrong to be a coach. It's, uh, um, you go to sports university, so you graduate with uh, kind of two Diplomas. One is a PE teacher, and second is a coach. Coach, it's a higher than PE teacher. So you're, if you're not a good coach, you probably go end up teaching PE at the school. So it's a little bit uh, opposite than in the U.S. And so I wanted to be a coach, and uh, my dream was being actually national coach. That was my dream of uh, my life. And uh, as a kid, of course, I dreamed to be Olympic champ. It didn't happen, but I always wanted to be a coach. And as a coach, I want, I always, my dream was to have an Olympic champ. You know, I didn't make it. So I still hungry to win Olympic gold. And it doesn't matter if I didn't win, if my student win, it's for me, it's equal. So that's why I live this dream and uh, I still don't have it. So I'm still dreaming. I'm still working on it. And you are and working in many, in many cases, um, and I always say that sometimes the coach is in the shadow, but man, I tell you what, when your students win and perform well, you absolutely glow. I mean, you are so happy for them. Yeah, it's like I said, I, it's, it's kind of crazy feeling because it's a, I live this life. It's a, it's a dream life. And when Aaron became a cadet world champ, First, I kind of touch myself. It's me. I'm not dreaming. It's me for real. And I have a student who became a world champ. When Helen won world champ, I mean, that's already senior level. That's my first gold medal. And so, you know, we're on the way to have Olympic gold. And again, whether it's happened or not, it's a journey of my life. And uh, that's my life. You're absolutely that's, one of That's the what best. I can say. Talk to us a little bit about how, in uh, 1991, you were still coaching one of the biggest sports clubs in Ukraine, um, but then you moved to Israel. How did that move from Ukraine to Israel happen? Uh, back then, Soviet Union was falling apart. It was it's still Soviet Union, and um, I uh, always, in the 80s, I kind of, when I start studying about our history, and especially after 1986, when we had the Chernobyl explosion, it's like uh, 40 miles from Kiev where I lived. And it happened that I was there during explosion. It wasn't explosion, it was fine. We had a wrestling tournament for the kids. And the way Soviet handled it, you know, lying to us about what happened. And uh, then I s start studying more about it. And, you know, I, s I start disrespect my country. And I, being honest, I never was like a biggest guy who dreamed about communism. We kind of all knew it's a little bit baloney, 
you know, it's it's kind of a good idea to be uh, about society we dreamed, but this was all dreams which not exist. So I, I start to understand that, you know, and start kind of disrespect Soviet Union. I love I love Kyiv as a city, the, the place I grew up. I love all my friends. I love people around. I just start to become kind of didn't like my country. And back then, it's funny, I saw on TV uh, Ronald Reagan uh, having speech. And, uh, and I liked so much this president. And I started studying about America. And I fell in love with America. So did that, did, did that propel you from Israel to Southern and California? Then, but, but then what happened, you know, the, it was like immigration wave. And my mom is Jewish. And I always had a problem being having my mom Jewish. Always. I mean, I've been fighting since I was a kid with uh, other kids. And it was like, Ukraine was pretty big anti-Semitic country back in Soviet Union, special Ukraine. And, um, but I wanted to go to the United States, but uh, it was hard to go to the United States. And so this wave actually, in 1990, big wave was, uh, emigration was to Israel because it was hard to get to America. Big wave was to Israel. So I decided to go to Israel. And uh, so in 1991, I immigrated, uh, taking, I just got re uh, remarried, and uh, I took my son from the first marriage. He was three years old. And I moved to Israel. Just so a in baby. Israel, excuse me? He was just a baby, three years old. He, yeah, he was a baby. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, so you, you participated in Israel's government national self defense program. Can you describe I, what that is? Yeah, it's uh, it's called Krav Maga, Israeli system. And um, previous prime minister of Israel, it's Hak Rabin. Remember, he got killed yes. in the 90s in Tel Aviv. So his idea was uh, start teaching in a, uh, in a high school, senior, senior years, uh, Krav Maga or you know, self-defense, right? because um, all Israeli kids go after school, they go to the army, then they go to college after army, boys and girls. And for them, it's a pride because um, girls usually, they would not get married, go to the army, because if you're getting married, you don't have to go to army. So girls would not get married, they would go to army as a boys, stay there. And boys try to study judo, also uh, martial arts, so they would go to... It's called the division, I think it's Holani, which is in the north with a, in the board with Syria. So for those boys, it's very prestige. It was very prestige to take like a judo classes, wrestling classes. So it's Hak Rabin idea was um, to teach uh, high school kids self-defense because in Israel it was back then dangerous. And so and the good kids would study more about it and go to those uh, elite kind of um, military uh, people, so they would fight, you know, on the board, like I said, in Holani division. And so in all Israel, it was like a government program. We've been teaching kids going from school to school self-defense. And um, like I said, it's called Krav Maga. From Hebrew, if it translates from Hebrew, it's a full contact in English, Krav okay. Maga. Okay. So that's what I, and so he got judo guys, boxing guys, wrestling guys, and like guys like me, and the actually, government Israel, kind of, uh, when I came there, you know, they, they met me. I have a picture with a Shimon Paris, and uh, it's Hak Rabin. We've actually been sitting in a restaurant drinking beer with a Shimon Paris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, I, was, I was working for him as well, talking to Russian immigrants, you know, because it's a lot of, it's came like one million immigrants, and Israel is a four million people country. So it was so many Russian speaking immigrants who didn't speak Hebrew. I didn't speak Hebrew back then. And I was like a pretty much speaker for Itzhak Rabin on the sports side. And so I was kind of in, in his crew, working in a school. And I, I actually was uh, teaching wrestling, Greco Roman wrestling, and judo. And judo. judo. Judo in Israel is a big sport. It's actually basketball, soccer, and judo. They had a. Uh, First medal in the history of Israel came from judo. I did so not judo, know that. yeah, judo very popular. So pretty much making a living, I was a judo coach. 
So you, you ended up in Southern California with students like Yuri, uh, Yuri Kalika, All-American yeah. and Greco and Freestyle and 2003 High School State Champ, which in California is a pretty uh, pretty rare breed. Joe Williams, you coached yeah. Joe Williams, All-American and Freestyle, and Greco, two-time High School State Champ. How about David? David Hargay. Yeah. Hargay, yeah. And, and Jennifer Rees. Uh, you, Jennifer you, Rees it was a girl from Canada. Yeah. She was a world placer. I mean, she was you, a world placer two times, second and third. When I, whenever I see a high level athlete, one that specifically that's based in California, I know at some point. She wrestled go, for Canada though. Yeah, she lived in California. She moved to California, trained with me. But my point being is that if they're coming through California, they're either going to be touched by Sunkist or Titan. They're going to be touched by you. They're going to have that expertise and all that knowledge that you've been able to bring along and learn. You're still learning. I mean, you are, for sure, uh, international certified as a referee. You understand the system. Uh, but you, most importantly, understand these young people. You coach so well. And I wanted to compliment you. you on in the way you handle your athletes. It's very intimate, uh, a baseline understanding, but you make it fun for them. They enjoy the process. And I don't know if you realize that, what you do for them, because it is so hard to be an athlete in today's modern world. Yeah. So thank um, you. Yeah, so what I do pretty much, uh, number one, what I figure out, I'm just being myself with them. If I feel it's funny, I will tell. <laughs> I mean, I'm not trying to <laughs> pretend. I'm not trying to um, just say high five, good job. Good try. <laughs> Just say whatever I see. If if I don't see it right, I'm saying that's uh, that's not good. It's crap. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna say. <laughs> you know, crap is crap. if I like it, <laughs> I'm gonna say I like it. But um, it will take time. Uh, I would ex first. I remember Helen, special Helen. Elena is easier to deal with Elena because she's a Russian. I'm Russian, so she would understand my mentality. You know, she grew up, but. In American society, you know, it's you treat kids differently. You always smile, say good try, try to be positive. And I didn't grow up in this system, so if I don't see it right, I would say I don't see it right. I remember my coach, I would do it same move, and I felt it's perfect. And I would do it like for three months, and he just mad, and he almost killing me, saying no. <laughs> and, I, so, <laughs> and I became perfectionist as well. So if I don't see it right... They see on my face it's not right. Whatever I say, they's like. So Helen was and Vicky, they were worried that I don't like them. I, I said no, it's just my face. I, <laughs> I like you. <laughs> it's just I just feel it's not exactly right. I mean, looks looks good, but I feel your muscles not feel it, and so it's you're not there yet. It's not your move yet, and so they don't see satisfaction on my face. Same with Aaron. Aaron was getting frustrated because. You know, I, I would say his hips off when he was shooting. <laughs> and he winning everybody, and I said, it's still not perfect position. It's your hips not your hips off. And it's like, what do I do? I mean, for you, I'm always bad. <laughs> Same my son told me. He said, you, my son would say, you know, you hate me. You know, <laughs> but that's the way I am. You know, if it's funny, I'm going to love. But if it's not funny, I'm just going to say no. It's not, But I, I'm not mad. I'm just... My face kind of weird. I was. I, I just. I don't know how to smile. Nice <laughs> when I don't like it. That's, that's a problem. <laughs> Why is it you're like that with great athletes? And when you see me, you break into a great big smile. Is it? <laughs> yeah, because you don't show me any moves. You just show me big hug. I have got no moves, <laughs> coach. I've got no moves. Oh. All right. Yeah. When, in, when in, you start teaching moves, my kids, may, maybe you're not gonna see my smile. <laughs> that's not gonna happen. <laughs> All right. In closing, but yeah, in, I mean, in one so simple question coaching, for you, coach. I just, I, I, I think that my athletes feel my passion, my love, and the it. athletes I have, they share my love. I, I believe deeply believe that they love wrestling as much as I love. I deeply believe they want to be Olympic champ as much as I as I want them to be Olympic champ. So we live one dream, and it's make it easier because we are one team. I always telling them, you can call me 24 hours, literally 24 hours, anytime I'm for you. I live my life, it's your life, your life is my life. Amen. And that's my philosophy. And it's not only philosophy, I live this, so I don't, I don't have to fake it. 
you know, I, I just I just can't live differently. That's that's probably it's easy for for me to coach because it's my life. And he is Coach Valentin Kalik. He's been our guest today in the Nike hot seat. Coach, can we do it again? I have so much more to ask, but we are up against the clock. Can we do oh, it again? Sure. Anytime. Anytime. Have a great trip with uh, all the talented athletes you're taking, Helen, uh, Aaron, uh, Elena, and uh, and I know you're going to be joined by Bruce Baumgartner and others. So on behalf of all of us, I want to thank USA Wrestling, Titan Mercury Wrestling Club of San Marino, California, Sunkiss Kids, uh, Art Martorian Company, thank you, and most Assuredly, thank you, Val. I appreciate it so much. Your coaching is making a difference, and uh, we're getting world medals out of the deal, and we appreciate that. Thank you so much for your warm words. Thank you. This has been a great inside interview with Coach Val, Coach Valentin Kalika. I'm Scott Casper from Takedown, and thanks for watching. <laughs>